said, thank you. Mm -hmm. But Lord, if it ain't one thing, it's another. Mm -hmm. My Lord, my Lord. But Lord, we know that you is a good God. And Lord, we know that you have everything that we need. But Father, Lord, there's a lot of things that we want. But I'm so glad that you know what we need. And Father, Lord, I call thanking you for Hanaway this morning. Lord, thank you for every member here one by one and name by name I pray thee. And Father Lord, we thank you for our pastor yes, 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 yes. this morning. And Lord, we just ask that you to keep on bless us, us in a mighty, mighty way. Father Lord, we come, Lord, just to say but the blessed. Father Lord, bless the sick this morning. Bless all of those who are in the nursing home this morning. Father Lord, we know that there's a lot of people that bereaved this morning. Father Lord, this time of the year. Mother and Father, Lord,
not seen. For by it the elders obtain a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered up unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts and by it he being dead, yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him for before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. The sixth and final verse of this scripture but without faith, it is impossible to please God. Can y'all say amen? amen? Without faith, it is impossible to please God, to please him. But he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The word of God for the people of God, and the people of God said, Amen. amen. <laughs>
stand? Before we go to the word, let's pray. Father God, we come to you right now and just want to say thank you. We thank you for just blessing us on the day. We thank you for just keeping us in our right mind. We thank you for just keeping us in the land of the living. A lot of people done gone to be with the Lord, but we thank you for our lives, our lives right now. And we ask you, Lord Jesus, let this word just fall on deaf ears on this morning. Let this word just touch somebody's heart on this morning. Let someone come to the church saying, what must I do to be saved? And we just want to say thank you, Father God, Jesus. We ask you, let this word just renew minds on the day. Let it renew hearts on this morning. Lord, someone need a breakthrough on this morning. Let this word just give them a message of hope on this morning. Someone need to be delivered. We ask you, let this word just deliver their soul on this morning. And we just want to say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'll be coming from the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. The Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. And it reads, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher and come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou do it except God be with him. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto these, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto these, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto these, ye must be born again. And I'd like to use for a theme on this morning, born again. You may be seated. Born again. Have you been born again? We see right here in uh, verse 1, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of of the Jews. Now, Nicodemus is a Pharisee, a member of the Jewish ruling council. In other words, Nicodemus, he is a leader in his day. Nicodemus is a religious man, just like a, a lot of people on today. Nicodemus also, just like a lot of people, he believed in God. Nicodemus also paid his tithes and his offers. One thing Nicodemus do, he fasts twice a week. In order to be a Pharisee, you had to fast twice a week and memorize the first five books of the Bible. Now, I know a lot of people in here today maybe can memorize more than five books of the Bible. But Nicodemus, he had to memorize five books of the Bible. In verse 2, the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher and come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou do except God be with him. One thing about Nicodemus, he came to Jesus by night. I believe the reason why Nicodemus came to Jesus by night because he really didn't want nobody to see him. Nicodemus was trying to be undercover. You know how we do when we're trying to be undercover. Nicodemus is trying to make sure the coast is clear. In other words, nobody sees me. But I have a newsflash for you. The Bible said, Proverbs, verse, uh, Proverbs 15, verse 3, the eyes of the Lord are everywhere, keeping watch on the wicked and the good. That's the NIV version. You never know who's uh, watching you because now I live in town. And when you think about coyotes now, normally coyotes don't live in town. Coyotes normally live in the country. But my neighbor, 3 o'clock in the morning, smoking outside, looked across the street and seen three, three coyotes in my front yard. Now, I'm thinking to myself, what in the world are they doing up 3 o'clock in the morning smoking outside, being nosy? I believe everybody in that neighborhood was asleep, but guess what? Them neighbors, guess what? They was actually up, and they was watching. So you never know who's uh, who's watching you uh, 3 o'clock in the morning. I, uh, I did not uh, know that they had seen three coyotes uh, in my front yard. But uh, a lot of us, we like to do stuff kind of undercover. We don't want nobody to see us when we do it. That's why a lot of people do things at nighttime, but like I said, you never know who's watching. Nicodemus did not want the Pharisees to see him talking to Jesus. 
Nicodemus is also is going against the grain. A lot of us this morning, we are going against the grain. Nicodemus is also an expert in the law. Nicodemus also believe he's uh, I believe that Nicodemus actually had a few questions uh, for Jesus. One thing about uh, Nicodemus, that's why he went to Jesus uh, by night. In verse 3, we see right here, uh, Jesus answered and said to, and to him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And like I said, Nicodemus recognized that Jesus was a teacher. He recognized that Jesus uh, came from God. He recognized that God was also with Jesus. Do people recognize God is with you on this morning? Do people recognize that God is with you on this morning? And one thing about it, we're talking about uh, the same Jesus that was at the marriage in Canaan of Galilee. That same Jesus who turned water into wine. Because one thing about it, the Pharisees, Jesus was always getting on to the Pharisees because the Pharisees was kind of like us. They was hard-headed. They was always doing something that they didn't have no business doing. And so if the Pharisees would have seen uh, Nicodemus talking to Jesus, they would have had a problem with it. Because, like I said, he is the one, like I said, that was at the marriage in Canaan that turned the water into wine. He was the one that fed the multitude with two fishes and five loaves. He was the one that told the storm, peace be still. In verse 3, we see right here, And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I said to you, except a man be born, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And the thing about it is, uh, he was telling him, basically, unless you uh, accept me, you ain't going to heaven. So we have to accept Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior if we want to make it in. In verse 4 right here, uh, Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? And basically what Nicodemus was saying, how? And a lot of us this morning is asking, how, Lord? How are you going to make a way out of no way? Lord, I just make $15 on my job. How are you going to take care of my family? But the thing about it, uh, God will take care of your family. But a lot of people is asking that question on this morning. Lord, how are you going to deliver me? How are you going to set me free on this morning. And the thing about Nicodemus, uh, Nicodemus didn't understand because Nicodemus was thinking about a uh, physical birth, but Jesus was talking about a spiritual birth. In verse 5, we see Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, I say to these, except a man be born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now, Jesus right here, he was basically saying to Nicodemus right here, I'm going to say it again, except a man be born of water and the spirit. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God except you do what's right. Don't expect your blessings to come. Mm -hmm. Except you read your word. How do you expect to get stronger every day? Except you pray every day. How do you expect things to change uh, in your life? But the thing about it is uh, prayer changes things. And we see right here in verse 7, uh, uh, actually verse 6, uh, it says, uh, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. And now we got the flesh and we have the spirit. And the thing about it is the flesh, you know, when people's in the flesh, they do anything. Amen. They mindset on fleshly things. In other words, uh, they don't acknowledge the word of God. They do what they want to do and, and they do it how they want to do it. And the thing about it is uh, the people that's in the flesh are... Uh, they actually don't even belong to God. They actually are spiritual dead. And they which is born of the spirit is spirit. Now the ones that's born of the spirit, they worship and serve the Lord. Their minds are occupied by God's word. And the thing about it is you have to be born again. In Romans 8 verse 4 through 7, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do the mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit. For to be carnal minded is death, but to be spiritual minded is life and peace. Because the carnal minded is not empty against God, for it is not subject to the law of God. Uh, neither indeed can be. And we see right here in verse uh, 7, and Jesus said, Marvel not that I say unto these, ye must be born again. In other words, Jesus was saying, don't be surprised. He, he said, don't be surprised because like I said, uh, 
you're going to have to accept me as your Lord and Savior. And John uh, 3, verse 16 through 17, and it says, uh, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Like I said, you have to be born again. And one thing about it, Jesus is my bridge over troubling water. You have to be born again. He is my way out of no way. You have to be born again. He's uh, my all in all. And the thing about it, nobody can do you like Jesus. You have to be born again if you want to make it into heaven. You have to be born again. And the thing about it is uh, when you're born again, you can call on Jesus and Jesus will heal your body. When you're born again, he can save your soul. Born again, I am covered by the blood of the Lamb. Born again, I have a new walk. And I have a new talk. When you're born again, your attitude changes. When you're born again, even your speech changes. The way you was cussing and talking, guess what? You don't do the same things that you used to do. When you're born again, you don't go to the clubs. In other words, when you're born again, you are are a leader and not a father. Yeah. When you're born again, not only that, but you stand up for what's right, yeah. no matter what nobody's doing. Yeah. When you're born again, you serve the Lord. Yeah. And when you're born again, guess what? You pick up your Bible and you read it. Yeah. When you're born again, you pray, because yeah. one thing about prayer, prayer changes things. Yeah. And the thing about it is, uh, we have to be born again yeah. if we want to make it in. Because I remember before I got saved, and, uh, and of course, just like Nicodemus, I was trying to be undercover. Mm -hmm. One thing I realized a lot of times when I would do what I was going to do, a lot of times I would always maybe check my right. Okay, I got that cover. I would check my left. Mm -hmm. I got that cover. Mm -hmm. I checked my front. Guess what? I got that cover too. Yeah. And I would turn around and check my back. Mm -hmm. I got that cover. But one thing I didn't check was up top. Because I got another use flash for you. We got what they call as a drone. And a drone can fly very high and it can look down low. And it's just like God. What the drone don't see, guess what? God sees it. So there's no way that you can get around it. So you never know who's flying that drone. And of course, Minister Yara, I had a drone, but of course, I wasn't a good, you know, I didn't fly it very well. In other words, my drone crashed. But I've seen people fly them drones and you'd be amazed where the drone can go, and what the drone is seeing, and guess what? You'll never know it's even in the sky, but guess what? That drone is flying, and it's looking. So you have to be uh, born again. So when, next time, when you think you got the coast clear, guess what? You better check again, because like I said, you don't know who's watching. Just like that neighbor of mine, I didn't know they was out 3 o'clock in the morning smoking, so if Mr. Yard would have been doing something I didn't have no business doing, guess what? There's a good chance they probably would have seen me. Yeah. And they probably would have told everybody in town. You know how we do. Yeah. Don't mess up. Because as soon as you mess up, they're going to tell it. So yeah. you have to be uh, born, again. born again. Amen. 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 The doors of the church is open. There's one on this morning that's looking for a church home. Maybe there is one that needs to be saved on this morning. If that's you, you can come on down right now. Or maybe someone just needs to be need a prayer. You've been praying to God and you've been trying to get your breakthrough. Maybe you just need somebody to just uh, pray with you. Or maybe someone needs to stand in the gap for a loved one on this morning. If that's you, you can come on down because there is still room at the cross on this morning. Jesus can turn things away. There is nothing too hard for God. It's just a light thing. We've been made endure for the night, but joy is coming in the morning. No matter what you're going through, the Lord will bring joy to your soul this morning. And we just want to say thank you. He is worthy of all the praise.
Sunday school at 10 a.m. And we have Bible study every Wednesday night at 6 30 p.m. Please bear all announcements in mind. Amen. Amen. 